This is 9.5b for Math 99, and we are just doing some more applications for systems. So we're going to do some coins problems uh, to start with. And uh, this one says, if Amy has 15 coins, totaling $2.70, and the coins are all quarters and dimes, how many of each coin does she have? All right, so we have two pieces of information. We know something about the total. We know the total number of coins. And then we know something about the value. So we're going to get two different equations off of that. So um, first off, I have, I have quarters and dimes. And um, so the number of, I'm just going to let Q stand for quarters and D stand for dimes, the number of quarters and dimes. And I know that there's a total of 15 of them. So there's one of my equations right there. Um, Q plus D equals 15. And of course, you could use X and Y or A and B, you know, whatever variables you want. Now, I also know something about the value. So each quarter is worth 25 cents. And each dime is worth 10 cents. So the number of quarters, like if I had 10 quarters, I go, you know, 25 cents times 10, that'd be how much the value of those coins is worth. Same thing with dimes. And if I throw them all together, they're worth 270. So there's my other equation. It's, I'll call it my value equation. Uh, 0.25Q plus 0.10B equals 2.70. And I have this to deal with. Um, and I just have the system to solve now. And I think that what I'll do is uh, I'll multiply this bottom equation by 100. Because if I do that, I won't have decimals to deal with. And again, you know, if you're comfortable with the decimals, you don't have to do that. It's sometimes nice to have one less thing, one less thing to keep track of. So if I multiply this by 100, all those decimal places move over two places. So 25Q plus 10D equals 270. Notice what we're doing is we're, we're basically, this is in terms of dollars, now it's in terms of cents. We're just writing it, you know, a different way, but it's still equivalent. All right, so next thing, I need to decide uh, what to eliminate. And I could eliminate Q or D, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to eliminate D just because 10 is easier to multiply by than 25. So I'll go negative 10 times equation 1, and I'll add that to equation 2. So negative 10Q, negative 10D, negative 150. So now I, when I add these together, um, negative 10Q plus 25 of them, that's 15 Qs. Ds drop out, just like I wanted to happen. And negative 150 uh, plus 270. That's the same as 270 minus 150. And I think that that's 120. Great. So now I can divide by 15 to get at that uh, 120 divided by 15 is 8. So my number of quarters is 8. So if quarters is 8, plug it in here or here, uh, dimes must be 7. So there are 8 quarters and 7 dimes. And you know, I might as well, I might as well check it by using my calculator. So let me pull up that calculator. 8 quarters, 7 dimes, so uh, 0.25 times 8 for those number of quarters. And I'm only going to add once. Uh, 0.1 times 7 for those dimes gives me 270. So that worked. That worked great. All right, let me get down to the next problem then. Another coin problem. And in this case, uh, coin collection consists of 12 coins with a total value of a $1.20. And the collection consists only of nickels, dimes, and quarters. All right, so let me let me just go with with what I have so far. So I, I know I got nickels, dimes, and quarters, and um, I'm counting. I know two things. I know something about the total number of coins, and I know something of the value of the coins. So total number of coins, so number of coins. I'm just going to let N stand for the number of nickels, D stand for the number of dimes. Q stand for the number of quarters. And I know that there's 12 of them. So there's one of my equations right there. Then then the value of them. Now, uh, let's see. Nickels are worth 5 cents. So I could write it like this, 0.05N, and do this in terms of dollars. But I, but I think that that's just going to make me multiply by 100 later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this in terms of cents. How much is this worth just in cents? So 5 cents times every nickel. Uh, 10 cents times every dime, 25 cents times every quarter. And uh, be careful here, it's worth 120 cents. 
right? Like if I put the decimal there, that's in dollars, and then these are in cents. But I'm, the reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to use decimal points at all. So there's two, two equations right there, and we'll get to this, this next part here in a minute. So let me write what I know. I know that um, the number of dimes plus the number of oh, nickels, sorry, plus the number of dimes plus the number of quarters is 12. I also know that 5 cents per nickel, 10 cents per dime. 25 cents per quarter gives me 120 cents. And then, uh, since I have three equations, I really will need, uh, I'm sorry, since I have three variables, I really will need three equations. So let's see what this says. The number of dimes is two more than twice the number of nickels. Whew. All right, let's parse that out. The number of dimes is, dimes is two more than, so I'm going to be adding two to something. Two more than what? Two more than twice the number of nickels. Twice the number of nickels. Let me double check that. The number of dimes is two more than twice the number of nickels. Yeah, that works. Great, so I have this. Um, so from here, one thing that I could do is I could take this uh, D is equal to 2N plus 2, and I could substitute this in for D. Like I could replace this D and this D with the 2N plus 2. Then I just have a two by two, um, you know, like I won't have two variables left, I'll eliminate the D, and then I could go from there. Um, the other thing I can do is I'm gonna subtract two N from both sides. So this is the same as two, negative two N plus D equals two. So negative two N plus D equals two. Now I have this three by three. And when you have a three by three, I'm fine if you use the calculator to solve it. Um, if it's coming out of an application problem. So let's let's enter that into the calculator. And I always like to check it, make sure that I uh, I entered what I was hoping to enter. Looks looks the same. So let me re row, reduce row echelon form this thing. Great. So it looks like three, eight, and one. There must be uh, three nickels. How do you spell nickels? <laughs> no. Three nickels, eight quarters. Uh, nope, eight dimes. Oh, boy. And one quarter. And again, I can check that, plug it back into this equation. Let's see, two more than, if I take this and double it, it's six. Add two to that is eight. Work checks out here. And again, I can plug it into my calculator, too, to check that value. All right, let us do another one. Uh, contains a total of 95 coins, more coins. Total, uh, total number of coins is 95, consisting of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Oh my gosh, there's four here. There are only five pennies. Oh, okay, so there's really not four, like we know the number of pennies, so that's okay. And the total value is 1205. All right, well, let's, let's write what we know from here. We know that um, we have pennies, nickels, dimes. That's supposed to be a Q. And quarters. Well, that's not much better. So number of coins. Well, fortunately, they told us there's five pennies, so five. We don't know the number of nickels, dimes, or quarters. But we do know that there's a total of 95 coins. And then we can do something about the value of those coins as well. So five pennies is worth five cents. Um, nickels, 10 cents for every nickel. <laughs> who's, who's doing this problem? Five cents for every nickel. Dimes, 10 cents for every dime. 25 cents for every quarter. And it's worth a total of 1,205 cents. Notice I did this in terms of cents, not dollars. Um, so there's a couple pieces. Also, there are five more quarters than dimes. There are five more quarters than dimes. Quarters and dimes. If there's five more quarters than dimes, that means there's more quarters than there are dimes. So dimes plus five must equal quarters because there are five more quarters. Yeah, great. So I have a couple pieces here that I can uh, start to into my system and uh, 
let me start to write my system and I'll kind of, you might skip some of these steps, but I want to be explicit. So notice here I can subtract five. So I know that N plus D plus Q is 90. And in this one, again, I can subtract five right away. So 1,200 for the, the total number of cents out of dimes, quarters, and nickels. In this one, I can subtract D from both sides. So I basically have negative D plus Q is 5. Notice, uh, just like last time, I have Q equals D plus 5. I could substitute that in for the Q in both of these spots, and it would be fine because then I just have a 2 by 2 I can do by hand. But since I got my calculator, I'm going to use it. Again, I always like to check, make sure I entered uh, what, I, what I was thinking I was entering. Looks like I did. So let me reduce row echelon form this thing. Woo, it looks like there are 33 nickels, 26 dimes, 31 quarters. So 33, 26, and if I could remember anything, 31. And that would be nickels. This spelling nickels again, dimes and quarters. And we already know that there's five pennies that was given. Great. So that was a mess of, uh, of coin problems. Well, let's go ahead and do one more problem. And uh, I don't know if I can take another coins problem. Oh, what a relief. Uh, the length of a rectangle is three inches less than twice the width. The perimeter is 36 inches. Find the length and width. All right. So we have some, some rectangle. And I'm going to say I have some width and some length. Well, hello, L. Uh, so I have some length and some width. And I know the perimeter is 36 inches. So the perimeter is, is, is all the way around. So that tells me that... Um, if I go two lengths plus two widths, it's 36. What else do I know? The length is, the length is three inches less, three inches less. So it's gonna be something minus three, twice the width. All right, so L equals two uh, W minus three. Find the length and width. So I have this system. Now you can solve it any way you want. You know, you could subtract that 2w from both sides and do elimination. I think I'm going to do substitution just because it's already in this nice form, L equals that. So I'm going to plug that in for L over here. So I have 2 times the length. The length happens to be 2 times the width minus 3 plus 2 times the width equals 36. So let me distribute that into there, 4w minus 6 plus 2w equals 36. Combine up some like terms, 6w minus 6 is 36. So it's turning out very nice. Add 6 to both sides. 6w equals 42. So 42 divided by 6 then gives me 7. w equals 7. So if w is 7, I can plug it back in to find what l is. I'll just plug it in here. 2 times 7 minus 3, 14 minus 3, I think that that is 11. So if the width is 7, the length must be 11. And let's see, 14 plus 22, yeah, that gives me 36. Great, so there it is right there. All right, and that is the last example for this section. You know, take your time uh, writing, writing them out. Um, I, I really like to try and organize stuff into a, a table. It helps me a lot. If you find that that doesn't um, help you, if you're really struggling with this, you know, send me questions. Of course, send me questions no matter what, if you're struggling or not. And other than that, uh, give the problems a try. Good luck.